Hello and welcome back to the shop. Once again, it's Mike. Uh, today we're going to have a look at a brand new 3D printer uh, and more specifically a new type of printer for me. This one, however, is what's commonly referred to as a resin printer. This is specifically an Anycubic Photon Zero, which I picked up for a little over $200. And uh, I think right now they're, at least at the time of filming this, they're about 210 bucks more or less. Now I had to buy the resin separate, which is about 20 bucks a bottle, because, um, well, I, I ordered uh, some resin with this printer and any cubic didn't bother to send it to me, uh, but they are currently sending it to me now. Um, the point is, is that this printer is completely different from the 3D printers that I'm used to. It uses UV light, to solidify, or at least partially solidify, liquid resin inside this trough. And it also builds from the bottom, it also builds from the top down. It, it builds these models, like this one, this extremely delicate cube, upside down, which is completely backwards from what I'm used to with FDM printing. Um, I don't understand fully how this works, and I'm not, going to I'm not going to claim to be an expert on how resin printing works. I assume that it's witchcraft but I could be wrong. Uh, but let's, uh, let's unbox this guy and uh, see what you get, see how to put it together, how to get it running, and then have a closer look at the test models that it comes with on its little USB stick. So uh, let's bring the camera around, or bring the camera in, and then uh, take it out of its box, which obviously it's already out of its box, but you know, we'll get there. Let's open this guy up. So we got... Pretty standard packaging here. It's a nice little fold out instruction manual, just like with the Anycubic Mega Zero. Boom. Let's just pull this whole thing out if we can. Yes, we can. That's pretty neat. Set the box off to the side. Remove our plastic sheeting here. Okay, so we've got a stack of foam. And on our first layer, let's take this off the top. Ooh, look at that, that's pretty. Let's see what's in our, our cube here got this appears to be an accessory packet with the uh, inspection card it says it passed it's good to know oh that's interesting it's got a little mask there a little cloth mask some rubber gloves a little warranty card guy a couple of uh, allen keys and some paper filters with screen and it looks like there's four or five here. That's a useful feature. USB storage. Got a little bitty Allen key there as well. Oh, another one of these scrapers. As is tradition, this has absolutely no ground edge on it, so that's useless. Our is the plug. That's it for that. Now, this guy. The lid comes with it. There's a bunch of stuff inside there. Now this is, as I said, this is my first resin printer. So I know absolutely nothing about resin printing or how resin printers really work. I bought this thing sort of on a whim, like the last one, because it's what I do. That's a Thing. No idea. Not yet. Oh, that's the build plate. That's what that is. That's kind of neat. And then that's the tray, the little build tray. It's got a little clear bottom there, a little clear plastic bottom. Oh, it's got a pour spout. That's neat because I get you pour out the excess, you pour out the excess resin once you're done, and it has little little measury marks right there pretty neato again i don't know what the purpose of that is just yet i don't know anything about these okay 
and then that foam. There's the main body, and something's missing. Right out of the gate, something's missing. I ordered some resin with this. I guess it's coming in a separate box. <laughs> No idea. Okay. So I guess let's assemble this guy. All right. Now, according to the instructions, unpack and remove everything. Done. Do, do, do. Number two, raise the access to 10 millimeters. So I guess we got to plug this guy in now. that and then it says put a piece of a4 paper in between this and the build screen but i don't have a piece of a4 paper but what i do have is leftovers from an old uh, 148 scale f2a buffalo uh, by check model uh, instructions and that fits in there quite nicely i'd like to point out just tear off that excess a little Good enough. There we go. And home. Nice. And now we tighten these guys up. It says press down firmly or press down gently and then tighten these guys. It doesn't say how to torque them, but I'm going to do my best not to over torque. Okay. So Return to the tools menu and then Z to zero. Enter, enter. Now take out your paper and hit detection. And then, and then next. Ooh, and the lights come on. So then this guy goes in there to the stops and then you tighten this business down. Then this goes on. that. Now all we have to do is wait for the resin to show up whenever that happens. Well, the resin finally arrived. So I actually had to order this from Amazon because Anycubic didn't send me my resin that I ordered with this. Um, they're apparently sending it now after uh, conversing with them via email. So the way that these things apparently work, and once again, I don't know a whole lot about the resin printing. Uh, it's, it's, you know, of course, standard 3D printers that a lot of people have. It's layer by layer by layer by layer. The way that these things work is that you pour this resin into this little trough right here. The build plate drops down into it, and then UV light actually hardens the resin in the pattern that you program into it with an STL. Now, I'm pretty sure that that's all done via witchcraft, but... I don't understand the science behind it. I'm not going to try to, but the way these guys work, take off the lid, unscrew your resin. And this resin in this case is gray. And then fill up your resin trough to the max level or to whatever level your STL requires. Replace the lid. Be aware that this resin uh, smells pretty terrible. And then you go down here to your, your fancy little LCD screen. You hit print. And it's great because you have all of your files are displayed here on this screen. And we'll choose this guy. And it actually shows you a tiny little 3D model of what you're printing, which that's completely different from every other printer that I own. They don't, that doesn't really show that at all. And then you hit the play button. And the build plate drops down into the resin. UV light comes on and it begins the process. Now this particular file 
takes around four hours to print. But I went ahead and uh, sped this up through magic and uh, went ahead and printed it already. That is a beautiful little model of, now this is uncured because I don't have a curing station. I'll explain that in a second. But that is a beautiful, extremely delicate little model that comes out of this. And there's a second file on here as well, which is a series of eight of these. And it looks like they're just basically tests to show you what sort of things can be done with this printer. And then get it to focus, you can see it a little bit better. But those shapes and those angles, overhangs, etc., would be nearly impossible on a standard FDM printer. This is. I feel like this would be impossible on an FDM printer, especially that thin, that delicate. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. And these are just the test prints that these come with. I have yet to print anything beyond what comes on the, the flash drive that this thing came with, but that's just gorgeous. Now, when I say earlier that this, that this is uncured, when this stuff comes out of the printer and, and it, it prints upside down, it looks like this. Now, when these things come out of the printer, this resin is only partially cured. And you have to take it outside and put it in the sun unless you have a curing station, which any cubic does have available. I haven't gotten one yet, but it's a washing and curing station to wash the excess resin off, which this has a little bit of excess resin on it still. You can see it pulled down there at the bottom. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's fantastic. A fantastic little model. And you can kind of see some build lines in there. But... That's just, it's gorgeous, quite frankly. I really, I'm really quite pleased with that. And I'm, I'm pleased with this printer, which I was able to get for $239 with resin that they didn't send. Um, I think right now, at the moment while I'm filming this, it's on sale for $209. So you can get them pretty inexpensive. And it allows you to make extremely detailed models that you, you otherwise can't with an FDM printer, your standard layer by layer printer. I'm moving, it's so cute. But yeah, I did, all in all, the simplicity of it, how inexpensive it was, and just how detailed this is, just from a test model. This is a fantastic little machine. I mean, for for a, a first time resin printer, this is thumbs up, top shelf. Um, I'm really enjoying this. I'm looking forward to playing with it some more. So yeah, there you go, the Anycubic Photon Zero. Thank you again for watching. I hope that this video was uh, entertaining, if not informative. Um, if you'd like to purchase one of these, there's a link below to uh, Anycubic's website. Again, Anycubic had absolutely nothing to do with this video. They're not sponsoring me. I just am apparently a sucker for Facebook ads and keep buying their stuff. And it's inexpensive, and I like inexpensive, particularly with new technology that I don't quite understand nor how uh, nor know how I'm going to effectively utilize it yet. But I can see this thing being extremely effective for making very small, detailed, delicate parts for different models, for props, for cosplay, at least in my case. But uh, uh, so far, for the price point and for the ease of use and the ease of construction, I I'm quite happy with this thing. But anyway, I, I do hope that, like I said, that, uh, that you found this video entertaining, that, uh, that it helps you maybe decide on your purchase of an Anycubic uh, Photon Zero. And uh, if you would please consider liking and subscribing, hit the little little button down there in the bottom and the little bell for notifications on when I post new videos, which have uh, recently I've been slacking on a little bit because of a lot of things that have been happening uh, around my city and uh, etc. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing. Consider Patreon if you would please to help uh, me continue buying stuff off of Facebook it seems and also building props which um, coming up soon I will be catching up on my video schedule which I have been lacking on and I do apologize for that to my viewers. Thank you again for watching and uh, cheers.